um, and to say hello to everybody. Um, and um, also to, to take this opportunity to say thank you to um, both Oise Kreutz and um, to Street Level for this incredible opportunity. And, and just to introduce myself a little bit. So I'm a new photographer, even though I'm not new, I'm kind of a bit worn around the edges, but um, as a photographer, I am a new photographer, so I graduated two years ago. My other life, I, I'm a psychologist, that's what I spent most of my working life doing. And before that, I was a, um, a butcher, a metzger, so I did that first, I went to university, I studied psychology, and um, a number of years ago, I decided I wanted to do something different. Um, and now I'm, a, kind of, I'm a, a hybrid, so I'm both a psychologist and I'm a photographer. And I'm trying to work out what that means. And the reason I use the word hybrid is because there's not a clear division and things pass between one another. So being a photographer has helped me to be a better psychologist and being a psychologist helps. I would say actually they both help and hinder um, me being a better photographer. So the, the residency was really a, an opportunity for me after coming out of um, art school. In Scotland's quite different in a sense from, um, from Berlin, in that sense there isn't the same amount of facilities, there isn't the same richness of photography. The work that Malcolm does is extremely important um, in terms of giving new photographers and young photographers, uh, street level, sorry, um, giving us an opportunity to start to develop our practice and to understand uh, the direction we can go in. So um, what I thought we'd do is uh, share a, a little bit about how I got here, just a little bit, but maybe to, to, to put in context about um, what I was trying to do when I came to Berlin. The kinds of things I'm interested in is I'm inter interested in the, the kind of interplay of opposites, because I think that's one of the things I experience most in my, in my work as a psychologist, that, that um, what we struggle with in life and what we find difficult is, is not is. I guess we, we often seek to resolve the dilemmas or the paradoxes we feel in one particular direction rather than to learn to live in the midst of the, of the complexity. So to give you an example of that, it's a bit like trying to be a sailor and you have the wind and the tide and you only want to, you only want to sail by one rather than learning to sail by both. So something I'm, I'm interested in is how do you learn to sail both with wind and tide? It takes a bit of doing, and you have to learn to do it. I'm also interested in the conscious and the unconscious, and, and what our notion of our self-identity is in regard to that. Um, do we think of ourselves as largely conscious, the bit that talks? Is that me, or is there more to, to the idea of me? I'm also interested in that, the, uh, the dark and light, the idea of the shadow. It's because a bit, very important concept in psychology. Um, and then the whole temple thing about growth and development, and, and how that relates to both the past and the future. Uh, and I'm, uh, just me personally, I, I like to do a lot of wandering, and that's what I've been doing since I got to Berlin. Uh, I have very sore feet uh, because I've walked so much, um, but it's a great place to walk. Um, so just, just to kind of put it in a graphic form, that's the idea of, of kind of dynamic in regard to instead of having a, a single line. So in a kind of classical dilemma, you have a single line where you can go left or right. And if you're interested in this concept of dilemmas, it's the notion that there's actually an, an interplay between these two things, and that learning to develop is about trying to understand the complexity and not necessarily just choose to resolve it in one direction. Um, okay, so, because the big challenge for me as a photographer is I have these concepts and I have to take photographs, and there's a big jump between the two, and that's, I guess, my big challenge, is, is, is how do I do that? How do I start to make work that talks to the things that I'm interested in? So this was, I think, in my second year in art school, just trying to explore that whole notion of how, as a photographer, do I, I start to kind of surface that notion of, of the unconscious self. Well, I've come to think of myself more as an unconscious person. I'm more interested in my unconscious part than I am in my conscious part. But of course, it's quite difficult to access that. But it, it, I know over the period of my life, uh, it's trying to, to come to terms with that and then trying to give that a photographic form and explore it in some way or other. So th this is a kind of theme, I guess it's emerging in my work. Um, what I've been working on since I graduated is this um, idea called Night Walks. Um, and um, Night Walks is, is, is a kind of personal exploration. So I talked about my interest in unconsciousness and the shadow and, and darkness because my own sense is it's 
and I guess a lot of psychology believes the importance of the connection to that if we're going to be healthy uh, and creative. So this work um, is made all at night time and um, it's, it's made in a combination of me journaling and trying to understand my own past and my own feelings about myself in regard to now uh, and where their connections are in terms of the past and then walking, I kind of almost like the kind of the, the board, the idea of derive, I kind of walk where I'm attracted to or I walk where I'm not attracted to. Uh, and I walk through the city at night time uh, taking photographs that connect in a sense to the kind of inner feelings I have. So almost a bit like some of the kind of um, colour field painters who were very much basing their work out of their emotions. That's the way that I'm working. So finding things that are, and again, touching things that are deep inside me, almost these become like archetypal forms. So forms that are touching something in me. And I guess what I'm trying to find in my photography is a way of communicating that, that, that finding forms that don't just touch me or express what I feel, but that, are, that might touch other people and um, maybe engender some sense of self-reflection. So, um, in coming to Berlin, um, I guess it was in a sense to try and find a way to develop that, but, but probably more to develop myself as a photographer, trying to find, rather than necessarily just doing the work, was to come to Berlin and to, to try, I guess it's part of this thing about looking at your own city and trying to understand for me what's hidden in the city. I was, I was interested in that whole notion of what's interested. So um, Glasgow, um, is very conscious of its deindustrialization. So it, you, it, you'll see it in the work that, that, that Malcolm was talking about. It's a big factor in Scotland where uh, there's a lot of economic deprivation and it's based on the fact that we had uh, in the 80s, 70s and 80s a huge deindustrialization. And that's something that, that people do talk about, but what we don't talk about is we don't talk about Glasgow's role in the slave trade. We don't talk about, we're slowly beginning to talk about it. But actually, if you look at the architecture of Glasgow, large chunks of the centre of the city were built off the proceeds of slavery. Um, and my own sense is that, well, that we carry that history, even though we're not conscious of it, and that maybe part of what we can do as artists and photographers is in some way to reconnect people in order that we can remember it and, f and for it to find its own place, and maybe to make some form of reparation. That's, I guess, something that people could decide. So, Coming to Berlin um, was in a sense to try and continue that work. And the photographs I'm going to show you are not in the same form. They're, they're more, I guess, I was doing two things. One was I wanted to get to know the city. I wanted to have, I was curious about what do people not talk about in Berlin? Because to an outsider, there's a lot of visible history. You know, there's a lot of history. You know, Berlin has a, has a history that, that the world knows about. You know, its involvement in the two world wars and the Holocaust events that have a global consciousness. I was interested, well, not just about those things, but what in addition to that and people not talk about. Um, and that was a case of walking in the city myself and talking to people. Some people, uh, uh, it was kind of more formal, that we, we sat down and had conversations and with other people was bumping into them in the street. People who engage with you and ask you what you're doing or, or people who you stop and talk to, I was stopping and talking to. So the photographs are in some senses, they're, they're not shot in the same way, they're more uh, kind of survey photographs. But I was also trying to ex experiment with shooting in the daytime. So, um, and I, I'll, I'll explain to you where I am on that by the time I get to the end of it, which is more like going back to the nighttime. So the, the, there's a sense in, for me, I'm trying to express some things that are, sorry, explore some things that in a sense are pretty obvious. That in the conversations with people, clearly the fall of the wall is something that's very, very topical. I mean, the marches uh, that have been taking place and the, the, the conversations um, that are taking place, um, that's something which I think people do talk very openly about, about, about their senses and their feelings about that, about the inverted commas progress of, of that. The other thing I heard, um, so, so in some sense, I was trying to find maybe visual metaphors for that as, as a way of me capturing for my own benefit the, the sense I was gaining of the city. So it was also the, the notion of dominance in the relationship between the, the former DDR and the GDR and how that coming together in a single Germany, how that was happening. And whether in kind of business terms it was a merger or a takeover. 
And I think that's out, out in the open. I guess the thing I would say that, that um, I'm not sure that what's out in the open is awareness of the impact it's having. You know, for me as a psychologist, I look and see the impact that's having on people with these things happening and whether anybody's paying attention to them. These images speak more to the past, to some of the things that have happened in the past. And this was a kind of, I won't tell you the story, but the, the photograph on the uh, left um, was a kind of personal memory of connecting some very old uh, connections or people that I knew that, that um, had left Berlin a long, long time ago. And uh, uh, the family has now returned after 70 years, 70, 80 years. So clearly the other issue was migration and, and uh, the juxtaposition of things. Of, I, this was something that touched me, was that migration is a very current topic, but I'm actually in a graveyard. This is in Neukölln. I mean, you probably recognise it, but the, where, the, where there's some pretty old graves of, of people who um, migrated. <laughs> so there's been such an ongoing theme. Um, so again, these are just, these were my survey photographs, a way of, of me putting together and remembering and trying to, um, uh, so it's almost like a kind of preparation for the work I would like to do. So, um, so the other thing I would say is also that the, a, the, a big part of the experience has been um, being with Os Kreutz and the generosity of the people there and how welcoming and how supportive they've been. Uh, somebody who's a new photographer, the, the, the experience has been treated like an, an equal, somebody who has, uh, and, and the generosity of, of um, sharing experiences and, and, um, and something I like about Germany is the directness that people say things explicitly and I, find, I personally find that extremely helpful. In Britain we often couch things in politeness that I find extremely unhelpful. So I, I like it when people say what they think. And I, would, I would say the thing that's gone with that is, is a deep respect but nonetheless a openness and that's been really, really helpful and helped me maybe to kind of, I've, say, I've said there, one of the things that comes out of it for me is learning and unlearning and it's helping that process, it really helped it. I spent Friday morning with Stephanie and, and um, great benefit comes out of that sharing of experiences really helped me a lot. But also advice that you gave me and someone else gave me the advice is about focus. Maybe I'm not focused enough and, and, and finding that focus and maybe a kind of obsession about your own topic and your own interest and trying to see how you get into it, but how you go left and right. And then the whole idea of finding my voice, what that might mean for me. Um, but the other thing is very personal. I, I really, really enjoyed being in Berlin and the experience of that. Somewhere I feel really comfortable because of the resonances with the city. There are a lot of resonances that are very, very similar. So I kind of, I'm, I'm coming back to, to make work, but um, I'm coming back because I, I, somewhere I feel a deep connection with. So I, I, I just wanted to end it with something that, that um, there are a lot of sad experiences. So I just want to maybe share a little bit with, with you. There are a lot of sad experiences of you walking around and going to monuments and you, you know, one of the photographs there was taken at um, um, uh, Platform and Place Siebsen at um, Grunewald. And that's a pretty sad place to go, but I, I, I didn't expect this. I came upon this monument um, um, in St. Prenlauerberg. I don't know if you know it. Um, and it was a, obviously a former um, DDR monument in, in East Berlin. And it was, I'm not sure I can pronounce the name correctly, but can somebody, somebody know who it is? It's Ernst... Um... Ernst Thierman. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think the day before I'd been to see the, the Humboldt Forum in, 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 the, in the center of, and, and to see the scale and the amount of money that was spent on it. And I came across this monument to someone who was a socialist and, and committed to people and fought against the Nazis and was killed in Buchenwald. And I, I just, if you can do anything about it, it would be great if somebody did something about it because it's so sad. It's a sad place and it's covered in graffiti. Can't even read his name anymore. That was my saddest experience. Um, but uh, what I leave with is, is a real, uh, lots of incredible relationships, a sense of where I'm going next with both my career and also with my own, my, with my own work. And I'd just like to say thank you again. Thank you.